This is episode number five of the My Niche is Human podcast. So this is going to be kind of just one of those freestyle episodes. I'm realizing looking back at the few that I've put together, obviously getting very stuck in my head because I'm overthinking like, how is this going to sound? How is it going to be delivered? But something that I'm trying to promise myself or promising myself is that when something happens, when I get in a rut or I have this kind of almost epiphany of something that's happened based on all the things we talk about, mindfulness and emotional intelligence, shit like that, I promised myself that I would get on here sooner than later rather than thinking about my day or the circumstances or the event that happened and writing it down in such a way that it's delivered so perfectly, I'm just going to get on here and kind of vent in the most constructive way possible. Challenge accepted. So yesterday I fell victim to myself, my bullshit. I woke up, this was Saturday morning and had a phenomenal week. But for some reason I decided to go on Instagram first thing in the morning, which we all know is a terrible habit. And when I went on Instagram, I started scrolling through and I was just looking at people kind of crushing it, doing their thing out there, having all kinds of fun, uh, making amazing video content, producing all this quality content. And I found myself as I'm starting to produce my own, I don't feel like I'm moving fast enough. I don't feel like I'm doing enough. Sound familiar? So what happened was I looked at a post and something inside of me shifted. It's one thing to say we shouldn't compare ourselves or compare our lives to those around us, especially of all things on social freaking media. But when it actually happens, when you let it permeate into your gut, it moves you. And that's what happened. Maybe I was off my game, maybe because it was first thing in the morning and I wasn't fully awake and I was more vulnerable. I saw this post and I was like, well, shit, what the fuck, what am I doing? Like, why am I not at that level yet? I've decided to do this podcast and do public speaking. Like, why am I not there yet? Well, first of all, you've just gotten started. Second of all, I mean, there's all these reasons. Um, But what I did was I let it affect me. I swear for probably the next two hours, I just paced around my house, almost immobile, almost paralyzed, afraid to make a decision. Like, what do I do next? Do I go outside, enjoy the weather and, and exercise? Do I stay inside and work? Because if you're feeling bad about not working or not being at X level, um, should you be working all the time or should I take care of myself? So I'm more open-minded. So the rumination and the back and forth and the, the analysis paralysis was in full effect. So this did a couple things to me. One, knocked me on my ass for sure. Gave me a little dose of humility, like, hey, pal, it's one thing to talk about all this stuff, but I think something that maybe it's only natural, but it kind of happened to me. I wouldn't say I got too big for my britches, but I think I got to the point where I think about these things, I put them into perspective, I talk about these things, I share all this content about sorting through your feelings, your thoughts and emotions. But I think part of me kind of forgot that I'm still very vulnerable. I'm still very capable of getting knocked on my ass. And not to say that I was walking around saying, oh, this can't hurt me now. You know, I know better. Um, I think it's just maybe we, we tend to forget or maybe as we're leveling up and chasing more emotional challenges, we kind of forget or maybe not even realize that as we level up in our emotional maturity and become more vulnerable, I think the challenges get more difficult. Maybe they get a little more cunning. They can kind of slip in and snag you when you you least expect it. I mean, that's kind of the whole point. So if I were to sum this all up into anything, I would say the most important thing to remember is, one, we are a creature of habit, and two, show yourself some grace. So when I talk about creature of habit, If you've read the book, I'm sorry, I forget the author. I'm terrible at that. Uh, But it's called The Power of Habit or another one, Break the Habit of Being Yourself by Dr. Joe Dispenza. They talk a lot about how we're basically an amalgamation, there's my big word for the day, of habits. Breathing is a habit. You don't have to consciously think, okay, I need to breathe. Well, maybe some of us because we tend to forget. I digress. But remember that you are a combination of habits and these habits have been building since you were a child. From the beginning, we didn't really know what to do, so we have learned behavior from nature and nurture, our parents, our friends, our schoolmates, you know, and as we grow, et cetera, until we start to develop our own. But a lot of our later groomed habits are built on those original habits, so it's really difficult to get around. 
So if I'm saying anything here without getting too far off topic, remember that you have habits that you have been operating on for as many years if you've been alive. So if you've recently had, say, an epiphany moment or something clicked where you realized maybe you were doing the wrong thing or maybe doing the right thing, and then you feel like you veered off course regardless of that realization as to say, maybe you got sick and realized you needed to stop eating less sugar. And then you stop eating less sugar for about one to two weeks and all of a sudden you binge. Well, show yourself some grace and remember that you've been eating sugar for maybe the past five, 10, however many years it is. So it's not that you're actually regressing, it's just that you are naturally a creature of habit. And just having that realization or that epiphany click doesn't mean you've put the work into creating new habits to support a new mindset. So show yourself some grace throughout all of this and realize that just because you're aware doesn't mean things are going to change. You need to build new habits, new ideas, new beliefs, new behaviors to further support the epiphany click or whatever. I don't know why I'm calling it that, but this new idea of what you want to become. Here's another example of that. We often say, I don't want to be like them. I don't want to grow up to be like them, whether it's mothers, daughters, fathers, or sons, you know, don't want to be, grow up to be like that. Well, it's one thing to say you don't want to grow up to be like something or you don't want to end up like something, but you're only halfway there because I believe the universe doesn't hear our negatives or I don't want to be like that. All the universe hears is I want to be like that. So not wanting to be like something is not enough. You have to actually want to be like something. You have to think of who you want to become or what you want to be or what habit you actually want to have to support the feel good or the stimulation or the growth or whatever it is. So habits and grace. And then second or thirdly, I guess, get to the point where you actually chase this uncomfortable feeling. Keep pushing because uh, I was telling a friend of mine this morning, get to the point where you do something that terrifies you, you feel really uncomfortable, you get through it, and then you can play the tape over again. But the tape is played of the experience that you had and you can take lessons from that, you can learn from that. You'll never read a book that will share that same experience with you and you'll learn best from your own experiences. So at the end of the day, what's the takeaway? Don't look at Instagram first thing in the morning. Stop comparing yourself to people around you. Remember, it's a highlight reel. I know we've all heard this, but it's very important to remember. And thirdly, create habits and stoke those habits that support the kind of life you do want to have so you're not left at the whims of your emotions. Because that was kind of the other mistake I made. Typically, every night, I'll plan my following day, the night before. So it's efficient, but it's kind of an awesome, lazy tactic because then all you have to do is wake up and follow the script. So plan your day. So that's really it. I hope this came together and made sense for you guys. This is literally an off the hip rant with no planning. And I hope to be doing more of these if they are helpful. Mm -hmm.